18 let's go to the to the last book of gospel are, are you with me the book of matthew is the last book of the gospel <laughs> are you with me the book of matthew is the last book of the gospel it's the first book of that so i have to, you have to be with me i'm kind of tricky guy <laughs> I'll put any time a question. The, the question will be very, very simple. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21 to onward we are going to read. Verse 21 to onward. It says, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. Twenty-third. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle, then one who owed him ten thousand tal talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the snake fell to the ground and, uh, and prostrated, prostrated him before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will repay every you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying. Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until, the sh until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported. To their Lord all that had happened. That summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that because you played with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he, sh until he should repay all that was on him. My Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. So, this morning, it is the will of God we will think over forgiveness. What is the word I said? Forgiveness. Can you say it? Can we say once more? Forgiveness. It is a small word. It is a small word. Peter comes to Jesus and he asks the culture he had learned from the Old Testament. Isn't it Jesus if somebody do mistake against me, I, I can forgive seven times? Is it? So there was a question mark. But Jesus says no. Not seven times. How many times? Seven times. Seventy times? Seven. So that is a criteria of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So we are talking about forgiveness today. And this forgiveness actually opens a door for the, for the Holy Spirit to work in. Am I right? Once we have not forgiven to somebody, how can we go in prayer and, and ask Holy Spirit to give us more? We cannot do that. 
And that is a beautiful story that explains how to forgive and what, how, uh, and there is an example also given and that is a beautiful example. It is to me like a person who has to pay his master, let's say, hundred thousand dollars. And master comes here, you are not paying me, now I'm going to sell you and get my money back. Not to you, but to the, all of your family. This is according to the Old Testament. But then, this slave goes on his knees and asks forgiveness. Lord or master, be patient with me. I will repay each penny. Give me a little time. And there we go. We see this master is so good. You say, okay, okay. But he doesn't say you go and pay back to me. No. He says, all is over. All is over. You, 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 you don't owe me now. You are free. Wow. You are free. What else we have more picture than this of grace? It's a grace, isn't there? If anybody asks you what is grace, tell this story. You know, to me, this is the best story to understand the grace. You know? So, the Lord and the Master saying, Go, you have, you owe me nothing and you are free. Now, what does this free man do? So, keep in mind, he owed him like hundred thousand dollars. Now, he there is another slave of that free man and he owed him, let's say, 20 bucks. Yeah. So hundred thousand dollars, 20 bucks, 20 dollars. So he goes and asks his 20 dollars. And he goes the same way he did, on his knees, patience with me, Master Abu. Will he pay him? Did he patience with him? No. He forgot hundred thousand dollars being forgiven of mine and $20, that's just nothing. But he seized him, put him in the jail and we will sell him and we will get our money and then some other, other you know, workers and slaves are freed because they have seen the grace. They have seen the grace upon that guy and then they go to the Lord, to the Master and they tell, hey Master, you you have forgiven that guy such a large, large amount, hundred thousand US dollar, but he is not forgiving twenty dollar of the other man. He, and he has seized him. And now master is angry. Yes, sir. He was not angry before. Are you with me? Yes. He was not angry when this man went on his knees. As for the patience, he was blind at that time. And he forgave him. There is not much return that come after a year and pay my money back. Come after five years and pay my money back. It's not written. It's written. He, I mean, he was, he was set free. But this man for, for, forget, forget, forgets everything. This is, this is what we might be today. Maybe we have, for, we have forgotten the time when Jesus set you free. Amen. Don't you count your debt, that your, your in, in, iniquities, your transgressions were so much, you were burdened with your sins. Were you, were you not? What did I not? We all were burdened with our sins. And here we meet this master, beautiful Savior, Jesus. And he comes and he says, that is you are free. Amen? He says, such is you are free. Go no more sin. And maybe we have forgotten. And, and, and we go to those who have sinned against us and we hold them. And we, we keep the record in our heart of somebody. And we just don't want to forgive. We say, hey, it's okay. But still the data, download bad, nasty data is there. That is keeping away us from the real presence of the Holy Spirit. And we are so far from the Holy Spirit. But we say, we love. Our sins were about hundred thousand dollars, which is like a huge, like a huge amount. And this guy owe you just twenty dollars. Maybe he or she has done a little, you know, sin against you, and we are just holding. No, we 
don't want to let it go. Yeah, he or she will, she is in a Pudadhan jail. You know, I have seen a lot of, uh, in my ministry, a lot of people who don't get healing. You know the reason? This is one of the reasons. When we ask Lord, heal me, heal me, we have some problem. But actually we are the problem. Lord is not the problem. We are the problem. We, we have something holding our heart. Maybe some childhood sins are there and we are still having them with us. Let it go guys today. Today is the last day. Amen? Amen. We have to forgive each and everybody who has sinned against us as our Lord forgave us our sin. Amen? So this is written here. You know, and I love this story. And it's the verse number uh, 25th says, But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children. So the Lord knows he doesn't have means to repay. So there is no source. So according to keeping in mind, Lord, Lord keep all this situation in mind and then he forgives. So it means all th things are forgiven. You don't, you don't owe anything. So what master wants to do, he can do. Am I right? If you have a lot of money, whatever your heart wants, you will do. Because you are the master of your possession. Whatever you want to do, you want to say, hey, go. No, no, you don't need to pay because you have much. So you can say that, that in the same way, our Lord has much. He can say, you be set, you, 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 are, you are free. Go and sin no more like he did. Like he said to the woman, amen? Who was caught in a right in adultery. And he said the same. But I want to think and I want to bring your attention also towards his mercy, his compassion. He's so compassionate. Someone is being caught in a right exact of adultery, but still he has the passion. Am I right? Are we, are we getting what Lord wants to say this morning? That's right. And he says, he forgives her. Go and sin no more. That is his criteria. He is not a Lord of, hey, you... You will be, the wrath of God will be upon you now. Every time he says, go and sin, no more. So, check and measure the, the gate of his forgiveness. It's so wider. It's not a small gate. It's not a small door of forgiveness. His door is empty. I would say there is no more door like this. It's empty. Open. Come. You are forgiven. It means you are saved. The grace is upon you. So Lord, when he forgives, he forgives $100,000. But when we want to get it, we just don't forgive 20 bucks. This is a real picture of human heart. Whether from Pakistan, whether from the United States or any, any, it's the same. I'm not criticizing you. It's about me. It's about my people. It's about the human history. It's about everybody. Yeah. You know, Lord has forgiven our sin, but we don't, you know, we don't want to forgive a tiny, small sin. Or maybe there is some whispering going on in his shoes in, into some ears, and still we are holding that. Mm. God, we have to forgive. Mm. This is the Holy Spirit. This is what he wishes for your church. You know, and God gave me this scripture for you guys. So Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? That is his question. So because Peter is in human I and mean is in flesh, so his criteria is seven times. But check Jesus. He says, what he says? Seventy times? Seven. I don't think so. It is even that. It means un yeah, unlimited. That's right. Unlimited. That is his forgiveness criteria. So think about maybe I'm, I still have somebody in my heart. And I don't want to. I love that feeling. Oh, he did something against me. I'm not going to let him go. But it's a, it's a message for all of us. 
through the Holy Spirit. We have to get it out. We have to keep our heart clean. So this is a day of great cleanliness, you know. You have a small house or big, you like things to be in order. You like things to be there with clean. You would never want your house to be nasty or dirty or any, you know, bad or, you know, smelly thing is there. Do you want? We, we never want that. Even in Pakistan, we don't want. <laughs> we don't want that. So how about our heart? It's, you know, Paul says it's a chapel of Holy Ghost. Don't you know it's written? In Corinthians, don't you know your heart? Your, your, your heart and your body is a temple of Holy Spirit. So Holy, do you think Holy Spirit dwell in a, such a heart that keeps all the sins against others in self and still be speaking in tongues or praying with others? Mm, cannot, 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 doesn't work in that way. Forgiveness, 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 more space for others, more space for others. If somebody sin against you, go and hug him, it's okay. Sister, I still love you. I don't want to hear what you did. She or he wants to maybe explain saying it's okay. I don't need an explanation. I have a broader heart of forgiveness because my Lord is bigger. We like to sing, my Lord is bigger, my Lord is stronger. But how about ourselves? We are so weak. He wants us to be bigger in heart, in space, giving space to others. But it is we, not he. We are the problem for our ourselves. He wants to pour water. You know, just, just imagine that jug, and uh, he wants to pour water in a jug. But we are the problem. Jug is there, and we, we do. Lord bless me. He's pouring. How can the water go inside the jug? We, we ourselves is a problem. So let it go. Whatever you've been holding in your history about your brother, your family, your husband, your children, your past, please let it go. Let it go and you will have real peace in your heart. Whatever you are asking from Holy Spirit, that will be the good way then. And He will operate in you. Fullness, in the fullness, you know. You will have more gifts of spirit. You will have more passion for others. You will have more intercession. You will have tears in your eyes when you sit down and pray. You will see the Lord is touching you and He is giving you and He is giving you heart for the nation. And you start praying and praying and praying and you you love that prayer time. You know why we just sit in prayer and we are done in five minutes because we are not fully prepared. I would say. And I teach to my church, don't pray a short prayer. You can pray a short prayer, but when you are doing a lot of prayer, then a little short prayer will work. Pastor, am I right? You know, but if you are not sitting and you are not having an intimacy with Lord Jesus, and you are just going to work and say a prayer in the morning, that is just a habit. It's, it's good habit, but it's not the prayer. That goes to his heart. Your prayers will go when you have an intimacy. Like my friend, my, my brother Deacon, he is driving the truck. He goes far and far. But while driving, he, he is talking with Holy Spirit. But while I'm driving, he is enjoying his salvation. That is a time of prayer. That is a real time of holiness of the Spirit. You know, guys, so this is what I say everybody. Like women are working, but they are deep, they are gone deep with their Lord. Oh Lord, what a good you are. You have saved me. You forgave my sin. Like my brothers, everybody of us, whatever I am doing, if I am busy somewhere, but my heart is there. You know, it says in the Old Testament, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. You know, we like to be called Christians. We like to be called, you know, Lord Jesus uh, disciples. But what about the, the heart of the Lord? Are we able to reach up to that level? Or we are still down? Have you ever thought about the, the book of Luke? And there is a Zacchaeus. Have you ever thought about that? There is a the small person. He has not made an invitation to Lord Jesus. Because he thinks himself so burdened by the wealth of the world. But he has heart. He has heart. And that is the beautiful thing. 
if he goes up to a cooler tree, or a tree, you know, uh, I forget the name of that tree. Maybe Pastor knows this a sycamore tree because it's short like Sajid. <laughs> you cannot see Jesus. And secondly, there is a multitude. People like Jesus in his time. Maybe for eating, you know. Or maybe for touching him once a time, once a time. You know, are you with me? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So people like again today. They were healed. How? Oh, yes, I got healed. Bye bye, Jesus. That's it. But Jesus is looking. Zach is today. Those who, whose hearts are connected with him. Yeah. This sinner guy is on the tree. But he takes the atta attention of Jesus Christ. That's right. Jesus is busy in a multitude. But still, he reaches the heart of Lord Jesus. Yeah. Why? Because he left his all burden away. Once he seen Jesus, that's it. It's over. He was overburdened when he, when he maybe started walking towards that tree. Oh, maybe I need Jesus or not. But once he has looked upon Jesus, he is totally free. He got whatever he was needing, he was requiring. Yeah. He saw with that heart, with that passion, with that, you know, longing. And Jesus is busy. But still, you see, your signals are... Connecting you. We can reach to Jesus very easily, guys. Have a forgiveness heart. Broader heart of forgiveness. You know, there was a lot of people who speak against this sentence. Hey, sinner. He can never reach to Jesus. But he forgives every time. He says, it's okay. You Pharisees, you, you Sadiq, Sadiq, East, I forgive you. I forgive you. So there was a forgiveness in his heart. And that's what we need today. We have to forgive. We have to forgive. Amen. So he is there. He wants to meet Jesus. But he has not an appointment. He has not that title that brings Jesus. But Jesus says, at least get down. Make, hurry up, get down. I have to abide in your house. Am I right? Pastor? He didn't say, I have to go into your house. Because when we use go, it means we will leave as well. But when we say abide, it means permanent. Amen. Don't you want your Lord Jesus to abide in you? Yeah. That's what we want. Amen. We want in our family, Lord Jesus, you stay in the midst of us. You don't come. And he doesn't, he never say I come and go. No. He wants to abide. He wants to stay. Actually, he wants to occupy your heart. Amen. That's what he wants. But this is again we who are stopping him. So Zacchaeus is there. He takes attention of Jesus. Jesus calls his name. Now everybody is jealous. We are with Jesus standing. We are making way for Jesus. But then this guy who is not even, you know, he's up on the tree and Jesus is talking to him. That's the, that's the way of Jesus, my, my friends. That is his criteria. Criteria of forgiveness in a broader way. Uh, not in a small way. I forgive, but the big thing I can still hold it now. He wants you to forgive others. He has forgiven us. So Zacchaeus was forgiven that day. Jesus did not ask him to go and sell this. Jesus anchored in his home with an authority, with a peaceful environment, and that's it. Zacchaeus knows. Rather, Jesus or the wealth. He says, wealth, bye-bye. I have experienced wealth in my life. It cannot give me peace. It cannot give me joy. The joy I'm experiencing today. So he experienced in a few moments that beautiful joy. He never wanted to lose that, right? So he suddenly make an announcement. Lord, I give more time away. I give half of my wealth to the poor. And I keep nothing in myself. All is given away now. I need you in my heart, in my house. He's not worried about his business, Amen. about the job he carries, Amen. about the bank balance he had made. He is not worried. This should be the heart of the church today. We should not be worried about tomorrow. This is what gospel says. We should not be worried. Different. The Holy Spirit is working. 
I'm telling you a story. I'm sorry I'm so louder. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, yeah, this is the microphone. I tell you a story. And back in 18, no, in 19, in the early of 19, or forgive me if my dates are wrong. I don't put actually date. Professor R. O R R. If you have heard it, I think somebody have heard this story, but I love the story and I like to share the story. He has some of his students from the seminary and he wants to take them to John Wesley home in England. So they all make, make a trip and they go to England and they want to visit John Wesley. Have you ever heard of John Wesley? Yes. The great missionary. You know, he, so, so he takes them there. But not only in that place, some of other historical places they have to visit also. But they go first in a John Wesley house and they have preserved each and everything from his house. So this professor take his students uh, from the seminary and he started giving an introduction of the house, like of, of the kitchen, like of the notes, his library and everything was there, his Bible, his notes are there and uh, everybody's checking, wow, this is John Wesley's, you know, table and all that stuff. Then finally they go upstairs of that house and there is a bedroom, a very small bedroom where John Wesley used to sleep. But the beautiful thing is the bed and there is a small area. So professor goes on the other side and showed them a very small thing down on the carpet. He felt that every day John Wesley would awake and he would kneel down and pray. Mm. So his, his knees were imprint, imprinted on the carpet. Oh, wow. You know, there were two, two signs of his knees. Right there, every, every day he would pray for hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And he, he would pray with the tears for America, for England, intercession for America and for the England. Amen. So that's it. They left. Everybody got into the bus. Professor started counting his students and then he found that one student is missing. Mm. So he goes out, check in a kitchen, go in the house, check in a library. He was, think he would be th he was thinking he might be sitting here in a library reading some of his books, but that student is not there. So he goes to the bedroom and he finds somebody right on his knees exactly on the printed area mm. and asking, Lord, do it again. <laughs> Lord, do it again. Right? Yes, Once again, do it again. Mm. You know, softly the professor touched that student and asked, Billy, let's go. That was Billy mm. And Lord did it again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. He did it again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, once we have heart, he can do it again. It's not over. He can do it again. You can go on your knees. You can ask God, do it again in Manchester, in Medford, in Oregon. Do it again. Let your revival come. Let people be gathering churches, asking Lord, do it again. Have mercy and forgiveness and forgiveness. So Lord Jesus is speaking. Today to you and to me to have a heart of forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So let's stand up, everybody, and uh, I will give an opportunity to for you if you want to really open your heart. This is the time. This is the time you can ask Lord Jesus to help you. If you're holding something from your past, from your family, from your husband from your children, whatever, whoever, maybe from your pastor, I'm sorry, pastor, maybe anything can be, you know, but this is the time to let it go, to let it go. You've asked Lord, as soon as you will let it go, Holy Spirit will start working. You will feel something really good because forgiveness brings, brings a joy on your face and you will see from now to onward, the things will be changed. The things will be different. Let's Let's raise our hands and start praying. Let's raise our hands and start praying.
suffering, asking forgiveness, asking forgiveness. This is the best time. You guys can start praying. Father, I pray. I pray for each and everybody here. And Father, I ask your hands upon this church, upon each member of this church. I ask that you may give them a heart of forgiveness, that you may touch them and give them heart of forgiveness and be with them, Father. And I thank God for this church. I thank God for this beautiful church. Father, I believe they have good hearts, but you want to still clean their hearts. Let their hearts be clean. Let their hearts be clean in the, in the name of Jesus. Blessing. Blessing upon their life, Father. I pray blessing upon their life in the name of Jesus. You may touch. And I pray if anybody feeling sickness in their body. I pray if anybody needs healing in, in, in any area of their life. Father and Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I ask in the name of Jesus that you may touch right now. That you may touch right now. Jesus name and everybody clap and say 